mark on you and there is no army with the power to conquer truth you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already He's a God. 
this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God, the still inside the storm, the promise of the shore. I trust the power of your word, enough to seek your kingdom first.
Let's clap our hands unto the Lord all over the house and let's worship him. If you're thankful to be in his presence, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you as you make your way back to your seat. Um, What a time we've had this week. How many of you have been so moved and blessed by what God has done this week? Aren't you thankful? for Holiday Youth Convention 2022. Come on, why don't we make some noise for what God's done this week. Amen. Uh, I want to go to Genesis chapter 32. And as I'm sure you can tell, I don't have much of a voice tonight. God's going to help us. And... um, I look forward to what he's going to do over the next few moments. And while you're turning, let me just say what an honor it has been for me to be here this week. I said it on the first night, but it bears repeating. Uh, This state, this district, and these students have such a special place in my heart. I love and appreciate this district very much and your hunger and your passion for the things of God. And you are so blessed with great leadership and Brother Mulliken and Brother Welcher. Why don't we give them a big hand here tonight? <clears throat> Thank you so much for the invitation. I honor you and your wonderful wives and children. God bless you. Good to be teamed up with my friend, Brother Dylan Morgan, Sister Paris Morgan. I love them like my own family. And uh, brother and sister Blackshear, or as I know them as mom and pop B, God bless them. I love you so much, and I'm so thankful uh, for your investment in this generation and opening up Life Church for us to come and worship. Let's give Pastor Blackshear in this local church a big hand. And he's already got a little bit of recognition tonight uh, but I just I want to give a shout out to Brother Jude Blackshear uh, he has taken care of Brother Morgan and I this week he's waited on us hand and foot and uh, he has done it with excellence and with humility and I love and I appreciate him and uh, servers get mantles Amen. servers get mantles God's no respecter of persons but he is a respecter of hunger And if you're willing to serve in God's kingdom, then there's a mantle with your name on it. Amen. All of the pastors here, God bless you. Uh, Why don't you make some noise for your pastor here tonight?
all of the pastors that are here, all of the youth pastors and their, their families. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Genesis chapter 32. And we'll begin reading at verse number 4, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Genesis 32 and verse number 24. The Bible said, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Where is there? There is the place that he was left alone. It was the place that he was left alone. Now I want to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23. Bible said by faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment by faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Verse number 23, it said that he was hid three months of his parents. The very beginning of Moses' life was a season of loneliness. And in Genesis 32, verse 24, and this is where I want to draw my title from tonight. It said, And Jacob was left alone. And Jacob was left alone. I understand that this is a very, uh, and what I mean by this, I, I mean no disrespect. I don't mean this <clears throat> in a demeaning way. But I know that this is a very isolated and secluded part of the world in all of the 50 states of America. And I know that loneliness is perhaps, if not the greatest, it is definitely one of the greatest struggles of students, and not just students, but individuals as a whole in this state. And I believe before we're finished here tonight, God's going to help us have a newfound appreciation for loneliness. 
And I know that there is a sinister feeling that comes with that word loneliness. Uh, some of you just cringed when you heard that word. But God's going to help you have a newfound appreciation for loneliness. God's going to help you here tonight. Because a lot of you feel overlooked. You feel forgotten. You feel like God doesn't know where you're at. But he's going to remind you here tonight. He knows exactly who you are and where you're at. And I want to draw my title from verse 24 in Genesis 32. Where it said, and Jacob was left alone. And here's what I want to preach to you about. I want to talk to you on this subject. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I feel such a... Um, I feel such a burden in this service for students that are struggling with loneliness. And if you'll plug in for the next few moments, I know my voice is weak, but that doesn't hinder the anointing. It doesn't hinder the flow of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't hinder your hunger. God's going to help us. So if you would, would you just one more time, this is the last night I'm asking you, would you just lift your hands? Would you just open up your mouth and lift your voice unto him? Come on, he knows where you are here tonight. Jesus, we just want you in this house. We want you to establish your throne in our midst. We're so hungry for a touch of the Holy Ghost here tonight. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, leave me alone. Now look at your other neighbor and say, leave me alone. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. <clears throat> I have often said throughout my life in ministry that loneliness <clears throat> is the greatest gift that God has ever given me. And what I've learned through the years about loneliness is that when God gives you that gift, it is not just something that he tests you with, but it is something that he trusts you with. Because if we are not careful, loneliness can be squandered and it can be wasted. And we hear that word loneliness and loneliness has a connotation in this generation that is a negative connotation. We despise loneliness. We have a very difficult time drowning out the noise and embracing being alone with God. And in Mark chapter 4, the Bible said that Jesus was in a boat and he was ministering to a great multitude. And when you study that, that great multitude translates to literally mean greatest crowd. And so in one moment we see where Jesus is standing before perhaps the greatest crowd of people. 
that he ever addressed in his ministry. But then a few verses later, it says, And when he was alone. And in the very same verse that it says, And when he was alone. It said that the twelve were with him. And he looked at those twelve. And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It said that Jesus was alone, yet he was still with the twelve. Because there is a difference in being alone with God and God being alone with you. It lets me know that those 12 walked with him so closely and so intimately and they were so near to him that God manifest in the flesh could be with the 12 yet still be comfortable enough to consider himself alone. That is how closely I want to walk with Jesus in the year 2023 that is ahead. I don't want to just be alone with God, but I want to walk so closely with him that he considers himself comfortable enough with me to be alone with me. And when you get into that dimension of your relationship with God, he will share things with you that he does not share with anybody else. He was preaching to that greatest crowd that he had ever stood before, but it was not until he was alone with those 12 that he looked at them and said, what I'm about to share with you is not for the masses. But what I am about to share with you, it is a secret. It is a mystery that I cannot trust everybody else with. Now, I've often been asked the question, what is the difference between loneliness and isolation? Because a lot of you are having trouble differentiating between a season of loneliness in a season of isolation. And the difference between loneliness and isolation is loneliness is caused by the Spirit, but isolation is caused by sin. It was sin that drove Adam and Eve into a place of hiding when the voice of God came walking in the cool of the day. That place that he was walking, that was meant to be their prayer closet. That was meant to be their place of fellowship and communion with him. And when Jesus or when God showed up in the cool of the day to meet with them, it was sin that caused them to retreat and isolate themselves. And I was in prayer today and the Lord began to deal with me about when the scripture says that it was darkness in Egypt that could be felt. And I have felt that same darkness hovering over the students in this district. It is darkness that can be felt. You feel the weight of the spirit of Alaska. You feel the weight of the depression and the darkness in this state. And you are fighting that darkness that can be felt. And because you have felt that darkness, you have begun to reach for things uh, that you can feel that will provide you some sort of pleasure and some sort of satisfaction. And when you feel like you cannot find that in the church, uh, you have looked out into the world to try and find something uh, that you can feel that will satisfy you, uh, that will lift the 
darkness that can be felt temporarily and because of that you have found yourself in sin and because of that sin you have entered into a season where you have isolated yourself from the rest of the body of Christ because of that shame of that sin but God is going to liberate you from that shame that has got you isolated from the body of Christ. And it is the spirit that causes a season of loneliness. Anybody that has ever done anything great in the kingdom of God has had to walk through a season of loneliness in their life. They've had to walk through a wilderness season. And the Bible said immediately in Mark chapter 1, immediately the Spirit driveth Jesus into the wilderness. And it was not until that wilderness that Jesus opened the blinded eye. He did not perform a miracle until after that season of loneliness that the Spirit ordained in a wilderness. So you ask yourself today, why am I going through this wilderness? Why is the Spirit driving me into a place of loneliness? You want to fit in with the crowd. You want to be popular at your high school. You want to make friends, but yet for some reason you just can't seem to fit in with the popular crowd. You just can't seem to be accepted by the circles and the crowd that you want to be accepted by. I want to encourage you here today and let you know that the reason God brings an individual through a wilderness is because a wilderness Wilderness is to prepare a man for a mission. And if you bypass the wilderness, the mission will not be as great because the man will not be as great. If God brings you into a wilderness, it is because there is something in you that God has, number one, got to break off of you. And number two, there is something that God has got to form inside of you. A wilderness is a school for your spirituality. It is an academy for your anointing. And there ought to be somebody in this house that says, God, I'm tired of trying to bypass and go around this wilderness in my life. I'm ready to go into this wilderness and die. And when I die in that wilderness, God will put an anointing inside of you that will cause you to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Is anybody hungry for that kind of anointing that I'm preaching about? And so when God wants to form an individual and prepare them for greatness, he will always lead them by the Spirit into a wilderness of loneliness and in that wilderness there are things in you that begin to die there are things in you that begin to break and at the same time there are things in you that begin to grow and begin to strengthen and that is why loneliness is the greatest gift that God has ever given me because if I would have had them, I would not have had him. I know what it's like to be an insecure 15 and 16 and 17 year old. Or you show up to camp meeting. Or you show up to youth camp. And you're socially awkward. And you don't know how to go up to the in crowd. And you don't know how to act in such a way that will cause them to accept you. I know what it's like to literally break out in sweats in large crowds and around people that I don't know because I was just an insecure teenager that just wanted to fit in. But we view loneliness in this generation as a curse rather than a blessing. And the reason is, is because this generation is so connected, we are disconnected. This generation is more connected 
to various forms of social media than any generation before you. And I am watching a generation at the end of, of preaching youth rallies and youth meetings and youth camps and holiday youth conventions. I am noticing that when the service is over, those young people that weep and cry and pray on the altar will go and sit down at a restaurant across the table from other individuals. And instead of connecting to those individuals face to face, they are scrolling through different forms of social media just to gain acceptance and affirmation from people that barely know them. I am afraid that in this hour, we have cheapened the definition of a friend just because you are connected to somebody across the nation that you only see once a year or once every two years at North American Youth Congress does not make that person your friend. You want to know what a friend is? Exodus 33 and 11 said, and God spoke to Moses face to face as a man does his friend. If you want to get a friend that will be a friend that sticks closer than a brother, you got to learn how to shut off the noise of social media and go to your prayer closet and say, God, I might not have any friends in the flesh that exist accept me for who I am but I know Jesus you are a friend that knows who I am and it is you that I need affirmation from let's lift our hands unto him all over this house And so what I have felt in this district is I have felt a great level of insecurity. Be seated for just a moment. I have felt a great level of insecurity that is plaguing the students of this district. And a lot of it ties into that darkness that weighs over you. But also part of it is because uh, the Bible says that we all with open face behold as in a glass uh, the glory of of the glory of the Lord. It is whenever you look in the mirror, you are beholding the glory of God because God formed you in his image. But a lot of you have got the wrong mirror. You have begun to look at social media as the mirror for which you gain your affirmation from. But in the Holy Ghost here tonight, God is going to help you change the mirror in which you are looking at your reflection in. You are not meant to look at your reflection in social media you are meant to look at your reflection in the face of God some of you are one prayer closet being built away from getting a revelation of who you are in Jesus Christ you're one prayer closet away from getting affirmation of who you are in Jesus Christ and so when God uses an individual, he takes them and he hides them in a place of loneliness to prepare them. And when you study the life of Moses, you will find out that Moses' entire life was spent being hidden and separated from the crowd so that God could develop something in him. Whenever Moses was born, the Bible said that he was hidden of his parents for three months and then he spent 40 years in the land of Midian. And then when Moses died, the Bible said that God hid his body so well that even the devil could not find him. But I want to focus on that 40 years that Moses spent in the land of Midian. You've got to understand that Moses was not just in the land of Midian to find God. Moses was in the land of Midian to find Moses. Moses Moses did not know who he was. He did not know his role in the kingdom of God. This was before the burning bush. This was before God called him to be the redeemer of the nation of Israel. But before Moses ever got the revelation of who God was and before Moses ever got the revelation of who Moses was, he got the revelation of who he was not. He said, I may 
not know who I am, but I know who I am not. I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I may not know where I fit in, but I know I am not an Egyptian. Let me preach to this generation and say, you may not know if you're an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist, a pastor or a teacher. You may not know if you're a missionary or a church planner or a Sunday school teacher or a musician or a psalmist, but you better get it in your spirit and say, I know who I'm not. I am not an Egyptian. I don't belong in this world. I am called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And so he determined within himself, uh, he said, I am not an Egyptian, uh, but can I tell you that whenever he got that revelation, uh, he did not just get a revelation uh, of who he was accepted by, he got a revelation of who he was rejected by, because the Bible said uh, that when he fled to Midian, uh, Pharaoh sought to kill Moses, uh, so Moses' revelation of rejection uh, led to Moses' revelation of acceptance he said the world might not accept me but now I know who will accept me let me preach to somebody and say you may not fit in at your school you may not be accepted by your lost family members you may be ostracized by the carnal peers in your youth group but let me tell you where you do fit in you fit in in a prayer closet you belong at the altar you are accepted by God. The world may reject you, but there is a God that loves you enough to give you loneliness. It's because he wants you not for the crowd. He wants you for himself. There ought to be somebody that gets excited about loneliness in this house. It is not a curse. It is a blessing. It is a signal to let you know God loves you enough to take you for himself. You don't need to be accepted by Hollywood or by your peers or by your professor or by your teacher. You need to say, Jesus, if you'll accept me, I'll look at the rest of the world and say, leave me alone. I've got to get back to prayer. Let's lift our hands in this house. I feel my help in this room right now. But perhaps the greatest season of loneliness in Moses' life was in Exodus 33 where God looked at Moses and he said, Moses, there is a place by me. I have learned over the last 15 years that a place by God is usually a place that is away from everybody else. If you want to be close to God, you got to learn how to get further away from the crowd and further away from the ones that don't want anything to do with God and further away from the world. And that is a place that is by God. And he said, Moses, when I put you in this place that is by me, it is in the cleft of the rock. It is a place of loneliness. It is a place where nobody can find you. It's in that prayer closet, if you will. And he said, I'm going to cover you with my hand and my glory is going to pass by you and I'm going to show you a side of me that I've never shown anybody else before. That word place there, it means a position or a location. Can I tell this generation, loneliness is not a limitation. It is a location. Loneliness is not a condition. It is a position. You don't need to strive for a position on a church staff or a 
position on a praise team. You need to strive for a position of a long time with Jesus. He is my best friend, and I love him more than I love my next breath. Oh, I wish you'd get hungry uh, for a relationship with Jesus Christ uh, in this house here today. It's not a limitation. Uh, God said, I put you there so you can know who I am. Somebody shout if you want Jesus in this house. Come on, shout if you want Jesus. Come on, I'm waiting on somebody to get a hold of this. I'm not telling you to shout if you want a microphone. I'm not telling you to shout if you want popularity. I'm not telling you to shout if you want notoriety or applause. I want you to shout if you want him, if you want Jesus. And I know what I have felt in prayer. I want to deal with that little spirit that's jumping in this generation's ear because you feel alone. You feel like you don't fit in. The enemy has jumped in your ear and he has said, he said, God doesn't know where you are. God doesn't know who you are. He forgot about you. He doesn't see your pain. He doesn't see your desire for fellowship. He has forsaken you. I want you to know the devil is a liar because he said Moses uh, nobody may see where you are uh, you might be separated from the crowd uh, but I'm going to cover you with my hand uh, if there's ever a moment in your life uh, where God's hand is on you uh, it's when you're alone uh, not in the crowd uh, but just you uh, and Jesus Something's trying to break in this house. We've shouted about miracles. We've shouted about revival. We've shouted about harvest. Is there anybody that'll shout because you want Jesus? You want Jesus? I just want to pray. I just want to. Come on, somebody ought to shout in the devil's face and say, he knows where I am. He knows my name. I am not forgotten. Lift your voice and just pray in the Holy Ghost uh, like it's just you and Jesus. I can remember I mentioned to you on the first night I come from a broken home I'm the first preacher to come from my family neither of my parents are living for God but they're coming back in Jesus name and I can remember I can remember when God called me to preach at 15 years old. I was backslidden and away from God, but God wouldn't leave me alone. And I went to my high school basketball coach, and I said, Coach, I give up. I'm not, I'm not playing ball anymore because God has called me to preach, and I want to be used of God so bad I don't want to miss anything. I said, Coach, I don't want to miss youth, youth rallies. I don't want to miss midweek service. I don't want to miss Sunday night service. I don't want to miss choir practice. I don't want to miss anything going on in the house of God because coach at the end of the day when you're not there for me I found a friend that's going to be there for me. You'll have to forgive me tonight. I just love Jesus. I just love Jesus.
And I can remember my coach cursed me out in front of all of my peers. And they made fun of me and my religion. They gave slurs toward Pentecost. And they didn't want anything to do with me. And I remember as I was on fire for God, I just wanted to do something for God. And I'll never forget it. It marked me. It changed me. I can remember at lunch one day, I sat my tray down at the table with the people that I thought were my friends. And as soon as I sat the tray down. Every one of them got up and walked away because they didn't want to do anything with the little Pentecostal preacher boy. And that broke something in me because I just wanted fellowship more than anything in this world. And instead of getting bitter at God, I went to my house. I shut the light off in my bedroom. I buried my face in a pillow and I said, God, you're all I've got. I need you to be my friend. And when Jesus was all I had, I found out Jesus is all I need. He is my best friend. You don't need popularity. You don't need Instagram fame. You need a friend whose name is Jesus Christ. Is there anybody that will crawl to this altar today and say, Jesus, I just want to be your friend. Come on, you ought to come with your voice raised in this house. You've met a friend in this house today. When everybody else forsakes you, when everybody else leaves you, Jesus will never leave you. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. When you go back to... When you go back to your village, when you go back to your church, when you go back to your broken family, when you go back to your college, you might not have a friend in anybody else, but I promise you, Jesus will meet you in that prayer closet. I'm not just preaching to students here tonight. If you're still in your seat and you've been struggling with loneliness and you feel like it's a punishment from God, I'm inviting you to this altar to tell you it's not a punishment from God. Maybe he just loves you so much he wants you to himself for a season. If you've sang on this platform this week, uh, I want you around this altar. you got to be an example to the rest of these kids uh, that when the lights are out, uh, when the PA system is off, uh, when the crowd is dispersed, uh, there's a prayer closet for you to go back to, uh, for you to get closer to your friend. Uh, Jesus, you're my best friend. Uh, you're my best friend. Come on, lift your voice and let him know, Jesus, I just want you. I might not be popular. I might not be accepted. But, Jesus, you love me. You love me. You love me. There it is. There's a travail in this house. You don't need to wait on more instruction. Let out that travail from your spirit. Come on. You want Jesus. We want you, Jesus. Lift your voice. Jesus, just be my friend. And he'll get off of his throne. And he'll wrap his arms around you. When everybody else leaves you. When everybody else rejects you. There is a God that knows you by name. Huh. 
Arrandolo Bojoso. 